Well, greetings, everyone. I'm glad you were able to make it. Uh, it's a, it's a, just a pleasure to see you. Uh, I'd like us to start uh, this week in this huddle uh, in prayer. So, Father, we give you our time together. We give you the work of our hands. We ask for divine wisdom as we do all that you've put in our hearts to do for your glory, for your honor, and for the kingdom. Would you give us knowledge of the holy? Would you help us to walk by faith and not by sight? May you give us divine wisdom and understanding that only comes from you as it relates to the next steps in each of our enterprises. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, welcome to another edition of Roland College uh, with our School of Entrepreneurship huddle. And so it is uh, my pleasure to uh, welcome you. And I would like to uh, go ahead and start with the, uh, with the ones that we have. Um, so uh, Zipporah, if you will, uh, if you'd kindly unmute and video, and then let us um, see what progress you have made this week. And then uh, we'll talk about uh, some things for this coming week. And uh, so I'll go ahead and turn it to you. Yes. Uh, hi. Um, this week, uh, I managed to collect the materials for construction of uh, the house. Yes. Uh, as I said, I would have started the construction, yes, but uh, I had a, a little bit of a challenge. But all the materials now are on site. Yes. and. Uh, um, I'll get started as soon as possible. Okay, great. Well, you find that that's not as easy as it sounds, huh? Just go get the materials and... Uh, yes. yes, because I was getting materials from different places, so I thought it would have been possible to finish, to bring them and finish, but I did the collection, but now they are on site. Well, congratulations. I know that's not as easy as it sounds. It sounds like just something you just go do, but... The one thing that you learn in entrepreneurship is uh, everything takes longer than you expect and costs more than you expect. <laughs> that's that's the general rule of entrepreneurship. There's no doubt about it. So uh, anyway, I'm I'm proud of you. Great work this week uh, to get that far along. Um, and did you have a uh, did you watch uh, the uh, educational videos uh, video that we had for you this week? Yes, I did. Okay, and uh, what did you take from that? What did you pick up? Was there anything that kind of stuck out to you? Yeah, the, the, the first one, obsession uh, with passion. And <laughs> I, I, I think uh, as much as I thought I was uh, doing well in the business, I, I, I realized I am not, have not been obsessed enough. Mm, mm. Uh, yes, because uh, as you talked, I realized it's just maybe I've just been uh, not good enough. Let me say that. Yeah. But when, now I'm getting the energy. As good. I listen to the video, yes, I'm getting the energy for to do. Yeah, to do it. Yeah. That is a great word, and I appreciate you sharing that because that's one of my biggest challenges, uh, and, and and it's why I don't even work with most entrepreneurs anymore. Because other than just at a very high level, because to, to really go shoulder to shoulder, like we're doing in this class, you know, um, it's hard for me because I run harder than most other people. And yet they wonder why they don't have the same results. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, except uh, it's there's a lackadaisical spirit among a lot of people. They think it should just happen. Like if I, in the United States, there was this movie. Uh, I think it was called Field of Dreams. And uh, with um, something, Conger, I'm not sure his first name, the actor. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, very popular movie called Field of Dreams. Uh, you may even have it there. Uh, certainly on Netflix, mm -hmm. Amazon. Uh, but Field of Dreams, uh, the 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 philosophy ultimately was kind of like you know washed up baseball player ends up building a baseball field 
and everyone kind of comes to it. Uh, well, that's no longer the case where as entrepreneurs, there's a phrase that we say that is a reference to that movie. And it is this, if you build it, they will come because that's one of the famous lines from the movie. If you, know, if you build it, they will come. Well, that's not true in the real world and in entrepreneurship. Uh, people do not, you can build something and people don't just show up to it. There are a lot of great buildings that are nothing more than monuments now, <laughs> uh, empty, empty shells uh, because they built something they thought was great and that people would patronize and they did not. Uh, so that's why one of the great rules of entrepreneurship in this century, uh, because there was a time where you could build it and they would come because very, you know, there just wasn't that many magnificent things, but there's so many things that vie for our attention in this digital age uh, on, and with uh, the internet and, and, and entertainment where there's no shortage of things to do. People are, are, are overly busy they glorify they're busy. And so then it comes to entrepreneurship and we would rather do 10 other things than to, uh, than to sometimes um, give it the time and the attention, but yet we think it's going to do the same thing as, 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 as other things and just kind of happen because we started it. We hung a, hung a shingle, uh, as we say, meaning we put a sign out front that with our cute business name, and we thought they'd start beating a path to our door, that that's what it took. It takes a lot more uh, than that. Um, it takes a focused obsession on, uh, on, on, on that because there's so many comp uh, competitors. There's so many other people that offer the same services. So it's what makes you different? What makes you stand out? What, uh, why what do they buy from you? Why are they willing to drive an extra 30 minutes to get to you and get it from you as opposed to someone around the corner? And a lot of times that might be because of the entrepreneur themselves, uh, because of the experience that they have when they're there or the customer service that they have. Um, you know, I pass a hundred churches on the way to the church that I attend every Sunday. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I could go to one that's a lot closer but it's because of the relationship that I have there, uh, relationships and where I feel fed, where the where where I feel like I'm supposed to worship. Well, uh, same thing in business. We how many restaurants do you pass before you go to the one that you want to eat at? Uh, you know, if it was just a matter of sustenance, you could just eat something. But sometimes we don't want that. Well, <clears throat> there's a uh, I love coffee and um, I have Starbucks most every day of my life except when I'm in Africa. I went a month without Starbucks last year. Uh, <laughs> very proud of myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, I did have, uh, have uh, the Java though, uh, there in uh, Kenya. And, uh, but, I, but, but with Starbucks, I drive further. I pass one particular Starbucks just to go to one where they greet me, where they are excited to see me, where they celebrate me, where they write sweet things on my cup whenever they give it to me, you know, hope you have a great day, Dr. Roberts. Or if i has been, a, if I've been on a business trip and I come back, they'll say, we missed you, uh, doc, have a great day, you know, smiley face. I don't pay for that. I'm paying for the drink, but I pass other Starbucks to go to that Starbucks because of what, how they treat me. So entrepreneurs, and how much does that cost them to do that? Nothing. They didn't spend a single dime to be able to write that on my cup. It was thoughtfulness and it was those things. They could make that so much nicer and I would still go to the one that's closer. What makes me drive further uh, because time is money and I, 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 in, it's worth that investment to me so that it keeps my mind because everything is about protecting my mind as an entrepreneur, guarding my heart and guarding my mind, guarding my focus, not letting uh, all of the, the, the million things that are vying for my distraction that's going to keep me from what, accomplishing what I should this day. Um, and so if I can drive further to stay in that space, the right space, I can do in 30 minutes what would take me three hours in the wrong place. So it's about being efficient, 
uh, but think about that for for as, as you're moving forward and uh, maybe maybe your uh, your pins uh, uh, houses are uh, a, a, a distinct color. Most everybody just puts up the wood and it's just the rugged. But what if you actually had nice uh, hen houses? What if you actually painted it, spray paint or something, paint it with something? That's cheap to paint, and but it can look pretty and it can be your corporate color. Maybe it's a bright purple. Maybe it's a bright green. Maybe it's a red. Maybe whatever it is that goes with your business name and your company. But because then you're going to start posting pictures of, oh, uh, Hilda, our hen, you know, uh, is happy today in her home, you know, and you're posting pictures on social media, but it's branding it with the pretty hen. I was like, well, of course those eggs are going to taste better because the hens are happy. You know, that chicken's going to be good next year because, because they've been, you know, happy for a year, not stressed out and in downtrodden places, even though, because the, the aesthetics, so you make them little home, you know, uh, you can put cute things out there, even if it's just for social media pictures and so forth, that really make it seem like it's a special little home for your chickens. Your chickens live in luxury, you know, <laughs> and that may just be because you put a bow on it and you put some paint on it. But uh, yeah. go that extra mile uh, as you're constructing these, uh, and that's going to 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 really benefit you. Uh, uh, yeah, and I and I thought. It was such a big uh, turning point for me. And uh, I had to influence my own son, who is a, a student at, uh, <laughs> doing automotive engineering. And he loves cars. And uh, I, I was just telling him now, this, and he's looking at a future whereby he'd be buying this particular kind of a car and bought a few very expensive cars maybe. And here I'm telling him, if you are not obsessed right now with your studies, and uh, you are not going to get what you want. Right. So instead of you watching movies here, just like the lecture was saying, in fact, I made him to listen to it. I said, this is very beneficial to you. And he actually listened to it. And, Good. Good. Yeah. It's That's awesome. great. That's great because it's so true. Here's what, here's what he and all of us need to remember. When you only half-heartedly engage in the material, you know, you kind of, you're doing other things, you're kind of listening, but it's not, you know, really getting in or, or you don't watch it at all and you're doing other things. Uh, that is why you keep getting beat uh, because in competition, uh, in business, because your competitors, there's others of us that are studying all day, every day. In fact, I had someone last last Saturday night say, do you just read and study all day, every day? Because I was speaking about the cryptocurrency market and I talk a lot of, uh, about uh, artificial intelligence and national security and weapons and you know uh, cybersecurity and things along those lines. And I was talking about blockchain and, and so forth. And, and uh, But it's like, regardless of the topic, I needed to know uh, so that I can properly advise, you know, world governments. Um, but the answer is yes, that is what I do. That is the work of my life. Uh, because for me to be the best, because there's other people who have access to the exact same information. It's it's how much do they apply themselves? The, the NBA just announced yesterday, they're going to have the NBA in Africa. Uh, and one of my friends, Dikembe Mutombo, uh, who's from the Congo, uh, NBA uh, Hall of Fame player, basketball player, lives here in, in the United States. Uh, we've done some things together, and uh, so they text. He texts. They text me, and we're telling me about this. But um, the reason why that was of interest uh, is because it shows that uh, you know there's other people in in sports, in professional sports. There's a lot of people who play basketball around the world. So how do you become one of the 300 people who make it to the NBA? Out of the out of the out of the two billion people or one billion people that play in their backyard, how do you become one of three hundred that play at the most elite level? We all have a basketball, we all have the same size rim. So what's the difference? And it's the the answer is the same thing in business. We could both start the same business, and I don't mean you and I. I mean, but I can start the same business as most people. 
and beat them at their own business, uh, even though it's not my passion, because I will work harder and be more focused. And if I'm going to do it, I put my all into it. Uh, most people don't know how to do that. They, they only know how to do it until it's uncomfortable and then they stop. They do it until they're tired and then they stop. Well, that's not how you become a champion. Every Olympic athlete and every NBA, they were tired a long time, time ago. And science, uh, science and doctors tell us that when you're tired, like from working out, you're only about 30% of the way done. You have 70% more in you. Your body is telling you that you need to stop, but, it, but that's just a false sense of comfort of let me go veg on the couch. Uh, uh, have you ever run like a few miles, uh, like in exercise or something like that? If you take off running uh, for a few miles, uh, you know, at least for me, uh, maybe five, 10 minutes into it, my side starts to really hurt me, like huffing and puffing and I need to stop and it's hurting. But if I can power through that, then all of a sudden it goes, it does go away and it's no longer an issue. And I can run for another 20, 30 minutes. And that's the same thing that happens in business. Most people, though, stop when they have that resistance. So I think this has been fantastic. Thank you for the follow-up uh, for this week. I love the ideas that you have for, for moving forward uh, as you construct this and really branding it to, to your business. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zipporah. All right. Um, Let's let's go to who who uh, who wants to provide the next update. Uh, jump on because we we're we're moving quickly. Uh, Anthony, do you want to unmute kindly and uh, tell us about your business? Yes, your excellence. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? I'm fine. I came in a little bit late. Yeah, uh, for the last week, I was uh, going around uh, trying to put things in place, and I was uh, listening to the to the lecture on the YouTube. I discovered that uh, uh, there are some of the things that we we don't take serious, like the simple things about our businesses. And uh, this, were, this was one of the key uh, things that really touched me when I was listening to the, to the, the clip of, about the lecture uh, on the issue of uh, 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 being passionate on what we do. And uh, I, I, I gave myself a personal thought eh, on how I am going to handle my business. And I decided to change the, the strategy that I am using. So when I went to meet my, my, my business partners for the training, uh, I thought it is good to share some of the materials that you have given and to us to read. Like uh, I started to share some of the views on the book of uh, born to be rich and uh, some of the things we think about ourselves and then when we end up into the business practicals uh, actually some were attached and they, they began to reason with me on how we can uh, handle our, our business very good uh question uh how uh, how, what was your activity like this week? Uh, my activity was more on training, uh, not more, not more of uh, sales, because I I realized that uh, uh, when the, the first day we 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 had a chat, uh, you were challenging me about the issue of the building leaders, and I discovered that if I don't get it right in the beginning. I will put a lot of uh, time to creating the awareness of my business and how they can become leaders and take up their business. So yeah. I I spend just more I mostly on uh, aspects of training and creating awareness of the business. Yeah, you are definitely in the business of finding 
and building leaders. Uh, yes. and, and in that business particularly, you, you don't find usually existing leaders. Uh, you yes. find leader material. Um, yes. And then you build them. If you, the mistake that a lot of people make is they see someone has success in, outside of that industry and think that that will translate and equate to success inside that industry. And usually it does not. They do okay, but they mm. it's usually too much work for them um, for the money, uh, and and they won't take the hit to their reputation for a long period. Or they won't be as vocal as they need to be in terms of owning it. You talk about the video mm. that it is no more. I mean that industry it is it's everything. Like you can't there mm. is no part time in that industry. There really isn't at least for the first ten or twenty years when you're really trying to build something that is solid because the problem is if you build it all around your efforts then the moment you stop doing that effort it all crumbles uh mm. if you stopped attending meetings if you stopped hosting weekly webinars if you stopped hosting training sessions and you stopped this and stopped that and actually went to three months on on a cruise in the mediterranean and, and in greece and rome and spain uh and the island hopping there uh would would there be a business to come back to See, uh, and, and, and the answer is no in the first five, 10 years, uh, really, really 10, 10 years. I, I don't know anybody who's done it in five that could step away for a substantial length of time and come back and still have a business uh, just because of the nature of that industry, which is nothing wrong with that. Uh, the goal is not to stop and do nothing. Uh, and if and, 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 and the truth is, you can do calls from yachts. You can do calls from, you know, uh, from planes, private planes. Uh, not necessarily commercial planes because they don't let you uh, uh, stream, but they certainly allow you to uh, to, to to stream from private jets uh, that have Wi-Fi. So, um, mm. you know, I I, I think uh, you, you're you're exactly right that focusing on the leadership and building leaders, uh, but you're finding mm. leader material and then you're doing the hard work of building and creating leaders. And leaders are only made uh, through trial. Uh, so it's through the perseverance, it's through the rejection, um, you know, and it's through belief and, but, but belief is what keeps you going through the rejection. And that's true for all entrepreneurs. I mean, it, uh, uh, you're going to be told no hundreds of times, hundreds, hundreds for funding for, you know, someone buying this or joining that, or, you know, doing this for you or, or whatever it is. But rejection and your ability to, to not even recognize it as rejection because they're not rejecting you. They're always rejecting uh, either something they don't know or it truly is not for them at that time in their life. Life is all about timing. Uh, and we're not, we don't get it right. We don't just know when the right time is. We don't even know when the right time is for us. So we certainly don't know for anybody else. We don't know what they're going mm -hmm. through. We don't know what health challenges, what family issues, uh, you know, what schooling things, what work uh, challenges. So the only thing we can do is present an offer and, and, and cast a wide net. Um, and, you know, and, and continue to improve. And that is, that is what creates the success. Um, but you're going to have people drop out. Remember this, uh, you know, Jesus had 12 disciples. So if you want to look at it, 12 front line, right? 12 across <laughs> first, first mm -hmm. role in, uh, in Christian, in Christianity, uh, he had 12, yeah. right? He didn't have a hundred, he didn't have 300 at 12. Uh, but mm -hmm. out of that 12, he had, uh, a, a, uh, a traitor. Mm -hmm. Do that. trade him and i promise you as leaders as entrepreneurs you're going to have even with a small team you're not better than jesus <laughs> you're not going to have yeah. it better right someone's going to yeah. betray you uh and that's part of your own leadership growth how do you handle betrayal how do you handle when someone does you wrong how do you handle it when someone what we say here is stab you in the back. You know, they 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 hit you when you weren't expecting it. Um, 
and so, oh, by the way, not only do you have a Judas, there's a Judas in every uh, business like that in every team. There's also a, a, a doubting Thomas. There's always people who they believe it as long as they see it, but they mm. don't. Those aren't the ones that have great faith. It's the ones who believe before they see that uh, you know uh, re, are are to be praised the most. So uh, mm. that's just as you're building. Uh, that's what I want you to think of. So in closing, uh, what is the activity that you're going to be focusing on this week? Uh, this week, uh, I have two activities that I'm focusing on because uh, last week I, I just think not part of the sales. Eh? And uh, this week, there are some of the deliveries I need to do. So, uh, part of sales and also the training continue on Saturday. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, Think about how you can, uh, and, and I want to hear a report on this. Uh, we do not have class next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday we do. Um, and yeah. I want to hear a report on this. Uh, it is important that you do something daily to move the ball forward in your business. Yeah. So if you have a couple of major things for this week, that's acceptable for most people, but it's not acceptable for the Roland College School of Entrepreneurs. <laughs> uh, th we, are the, we are the SEAL team. The Army, the Navy, the military, the Air Force, they can stay doing their the soft stuff. This is the elite. This is the special forces of entrepreneurship. So what can you do every single day that will move your business forward. And you don't need to answer me right now, but I need you to ponder that. I need you to yeah. uh, kind of sit and chew on that. And you need to, to get the answer and then execute it, implement it, okay? Uh, what can yeah. you do every day? Uh, because that's the only way, that's the only way. That is the only way. Very good. Thank you so much, Anthony. Thank you for sharing. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, who? Who? Let's uh, hear hear another update. Uh, who has not gone yet? You have not gone any of our weeks uh, in in the huddle. Okay, Stephen. Yes, sir. Welcome. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Aaron, and um, everybody in the class. Uh, my name is Stephen. I know I've not um, spoken in these uh, meetings because, of course, um, I've been following. And um, yes, um, I have a small shop, a pharmacy, and that is what him here to to learn. Uh, how to increase it and how to open more branches and all that. Yes, excellent, excellent. Uh, so, Stephen, let me ask you, uh, what um, what are some of the challenges that you're facing right now? What are some of the things that you're doing? Maybe in marketing and in hours of operation, are you short staffed or, you know, what what is the situation? Our shop has been running for the last two years. So uh, what we are generally doing is um, we open at um, 8.30 and we close at 10 because our pharmacy is um, an estate pharmacy. So basically we have business as from four to around 9, 10. So we are late night pharmacy. We are, have two staffs and um, sometimes of course I jack in and uh, dispense. So basically that is what we are doing over there. So being, being an estate pharmacy, we really close late and open highly so that we can get um, as many customers as we can. Most of the, the, the challenge we have as of now, um, 
we have not impact much on doing a lot of marketing uh, uh, and of course competition around the place so i'm here to learn how to of course i'll do that and stand out in all this yeah oh great great okay i think i know uh where to go here um so your busy times are really four to ten and even more so you know it's maybe eight to ten all right something like that yeah so let's say four o'clock on is the busier time um so yeah so you're not trying to get busier during that time what we're trying to do is get people to come earlier right get new clients to, to fill the day is that accurate yeah okay so, sure so the best way to grow is is by growing the the morning and afternoon clientele uh not mm -hmm. the evening because the evening sounds like you're already doing well and the evening is probably what's paying for everything right now yeah yeah okay so uh let's take a moment and uh think through uh what can we do to attract customers uh before four o'clock well let's take from their food and beverage the restaurant industry what restaurants mm -hmm. do is they serve the exact same food the, a very similar menu just smaller portions at a cheaper price and they call it a lunch menu for, so that if you and usually the cutoff is 4 p.m uh maybe 3 p.m and sometimes mm -hmm. 4 p.m 3 4 p.m is usually the cutoff um, yeah and that's because they're trying to incentivize people to come there for lunch don't just wait for dinner uh, okay and so that is how the restaurant industry tries to entice you to come in for uh, before their dinner rush so okay. we need to think of something similar or that's obviously worked that's why restaurants around the world do it so we need to think about having a what does that mean in the pharmacy business you can't discount the you know the things by coming in early but maybe what you could do is um uh you could have have a, a what we call a chotsky uh a, a little a gift or a thing that they get by coming to your pharmacy not anyone else to your pharmacy before four o'clock mm -hmm. all customers receive this um or maybe you want to just start with trying to grow one day of the week let's say that you're pretty busy on friday morning in the afternoon just because maybe people got paid that day so you don't need to drive more customers on friday you need to drive them mm -hmm. on monday tuesday and wednesday during the those mornings are the slowest uh so you've got to do something there so maybe you have a special thing uh, for uh you know for those three days during that time uh also is it uh, mostly women and mothers who come pick up the medication for the family uh or is it doctors or you know if we can identify uh especially during mm -hmm. the day who is likely to come pick up medication then we can tailor a an offering uh to mm -hmm. to male to men and women so uh, uh men get this or women get that Here's the way other thing I like to see, and they do this at sporting events here in the United States. Every time a team scores a touchdown, then they get mm -hmm. uh, they hand out, uh, you know, a free ice cream to McDonald's or they give if the team, if the sports team wins the whole game, then Chick-fil-A, mm -hmm. a, a chicken sandwich place, will give them a card for a free chicken sandwich. Well, all, nobody goes into a restaurant and just buys a chicken sandwich, right? They buy fries and a drink and they usually don't eat by themselves. So they're paying for their family. And so it's mm -hmm. a brilliant marketing thing. They're not losing a dime by doing that. They're, it's a great revenue generator. So maybe there is yeah. a business that uh, you can help partner even when maybe someone on here. But uh, imagine if, uh, uh, if if you were able to work something out like that, where where they where you had a car that was maybe a buy one get one free for uh, everyone who comes mm -hmm. uh, during this time and this time on these days to get your medication, we're going to give you, and it's not even costing you anything. In fact, your marketing is marketing for another business. 
So you're helping someone else. Mm -hmm. And then so by helping someone else, your business grows. Yeah, so yeah. Together a little package, a, a prize package almost. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's almost yeah. like the Cracker Jack box in the old days. There were Cracker Jacks. There was like caramel popcorn. And inside every single, this was from the late 1950s, early 1960s. And they mm -hmm. always put in a little prize. It was usually just like a sticker or, you know, but sometimes every now and then there was like this mm -hmm. little metal, uh, like dice or something. Uh, so yeah. every now and then, that was the big, big, big prize, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but that was people always wanted to see it because they wondered what their gift was going to be today. What was it going to be when I opened that mm -hmm. box? I, you'd open the box even if you weren't hungry, just because you wanted to see what the prize was. That's what you've got to create. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, if I've got a choice between your pharmacy and uh, 30 other pharmacies, I'm going to go to mm -hmm. yours because at least I get something else. I get something in addition. You know? yeah. There's an extra reason for yeah. you to go there. Um, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. be thinking about that. Also be thinking about, depending on how much space you have in your pharmacy, think about subletting mm -hmm. a little portion of it to a business that has clientele that can become your clientele. It's what we call borrowing, okay. customers. borrowing customers. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I try to do is when I'm trying to, when I start a new business and I say, okay, I need customers. Instead of trying to just start from scratch, I ask the question, mm -hmm. who already has my customer? Who already has it? What's a company that they're already servicing the very people who would love my product or service? So mm -hmm. what I have to do is then get my product or service connected with them, or I need to incentivize them to come be a, you know, do something with me. Uh, yeah. but somehow. So let me give you an example. A lot of women who go to salons and spas, mm -hmm. they have extra yeah. money because they're spending a hundred dollars on a massage and a facial and, you know, these skin uh, improvements. Yeah. So what they do is, uh, a lot of times there will be a smoothie shop. They find that the women who spend the money on that also uh, tend to eat healthier. They care more about their bodies. So, yeah. so, so there's usually a smoothie shop next door uh, mm -hmm. or, or things like that, uh, or even in the salon. When I opened up a smoothie shop, I actually mm -hmm. did, uh, inside of a salon, uh, a high-end salon in one town because that's yeah. where they were they were already going to be there so they ended up buying from me because they came for the other stuff they wouldn't have come yeah. to my shop just to come to my shop so mm -hmm. borrow customers from other uh, from another industry and by the way if you get this this is this is worth you really giving a lot of thought to because this mm -hmm. is not just for your one store now this is for as you open new stores this is going to be the model this is the model this is how you start fast and then you don't mm -hmm. have to cover as much cash flow for as long because you've got a better business model. The last uh, example I want to give you is of Walmart. Walmart, uh, mm -hmm. every new Walmart that is built, there's always mm -hmm. about 10 stores around it. There's always an out parcel um, that has, yeah. it used to be like a radio shack, but now they, it's got great clips. Great clips is a mm -hmm. haircutting place. There's always a Sally's, which is like a, cheap hair products or professional hair products. There's always mm -hmm. this one particular brand. I forget the name of it. That's a clothing store. There's always a subway, which is where you can get uh, like a, a deli sandwiches. Um, mm -hmm. And it's because they know that Walmart's customers are their customers and it works every single time. And they have duplicated it thousands of times around the world. And mm -hmm. so I give you that because Rather, it's you finding a business, a company that opens up a bunch of stores that you mm -hmm. say, I would like to rent a, a space for a small pharmacy in every store you open. You know, the uh -huh. supermarkets and the food. Yeah. I want to open. I just want a little bit of space to service your customers uh, with excellence uh, in a pharmacy in every single one. This is the pharmacy yeah. we have now. We're not just another boring pharmacy. We have exceptional service. We're well stocked, uh -huh. very friendly. Uh, we have we engage with our customers. There's a relationship mm -hmm. here. Uh, we we have prizes and things uh, because we want them to look forward to coming here. Uh, and and so I, that's how I want you to think 
and I think if we get that right, then yeah. your current practice will grow substantially, especially in the times where you want to increase foot traffic. Um, mm -hmm. And then also it will provide a better business model and a path to growing the actual number of pharmacies you have. Thank you very much. I I will put all that into consideration because those are quite quality um, views and to us, um, they will help us grow and achieve that which we want to. Great. Yeah. Very good. Very, very good. All right. All right. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Who, who is next? Who has not gone and you want to update on your business? And um, we've got about 15 more minutes. This is your chance. This is what Ah, yes, uh, oh, yes, welcome. Greetings, Jonathan. Yes, uh, I've equally not spoken so far in the, in the class. I've been following, I've been very much present. And uh, I had shared through the email about uh, my business uh, proposal. Uh, I would like to venture in the same, uh, the same business as Zipora on chicken farm business. Uh, there before, I've just been doing the, um, the home, um, uh, just enough chicken for supply within the home setup, but uh, I'll now go on to do it as a business. I've done a little bit of research with friends uh, who are having same farm on chicken and specific the Kienyeji chicken, because one, uh, it is easier to deal with them because uh, they are more adapted the climate and there's no risk of many diseases and the likes. Uh, I'm also currently in touch with a friend who is selling the chicken product. So I'm getting more advices on um, the expectation in the market. So uh, because I'm to set up the farm slightly a distance from where I'm currently in, I'm in Nairobi, in Nairobi County where I work, but uh, I intend to set up the, the farm in another county, but very neighboring. And I'm um, to be free the better part of next week. That's when I'm intending to do a new farm specifically for this uh, chicken because I cannot mix them up with the, the ones that I already have. So that's, uh, that's what I'm currently working on. And uh, I'm to implement the better part of this next week because week I'll be free. Yes, that is the first come with the business. Uh, I also read through the, um, listened to the lecture that we had been posted for this week and outstanding. And uh, the concept or the one thing that I got is uh, it's not enough to just work hard. You just have to work hard enough, enough to achieve your goals. And uh, you must do some good planning and remain focused and then have the, the right thinking remain positive no matter the challenges that will come through in the process of implementing or what you are focusing on so that's the far i've come that that's great that's great and i appreciate you sharing that uh, it reminds me uh of a scripture that i read this morning um because i think when it comes to business, uh, let me see here. I'm, uh, one of the biggest challenges is that people do not control their emotions. They're driven too much by, by circumstances. They're driven too much by how they feel. Uh, circumstances are always going to happen. You're always going to have that. It's, it's not what happens. It's how you handle it. Um, and so, Proverbs 25, verse 28 says, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Well, as we know, a city that is broken down and without walls is vulnerable to attack. It's vulnerable. That's why uh, cities are built. And, re, you know, but a city that's broken down and without walls is vulnerable. They're vulnerable to outside attack. They're vulnerable to outside um, uh, uh, disease. They're vulnerable to all manners and sorts of attacks. And, um, and, mm -hmm. it, and it says, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is just like that. 
You're going to go with every whim. You're going to be tossed like a small boat on big waves. You're just going to never get where you're trying to go. Uh, and worse, you're going to experience destruction uh, because you're just like a city that is just wide open to problems. And I say all of that because I see this as uh, the emotional fortitude, the internal fortitude. A lot of times they talk about it as emotional quotient. Just like we have an IQ, an intellectual quotient, what is your emotional quotient? Meaning, how, much, how many problems can I throw at you before you crumble? How many bad things have to happen before Jonathan is no longer strong, before no, Jonathan can no longer withstand it? Because I promise you, there is a, there is a limit. Mm -hmm. There is a limit. And um, we look to Job in, in, in the Bible to see, you know, where most people's limit, even the godly people that were, you know, where their limit was, including his wife. And they're like, forget it. Forget it. We're done. <laughs> and uh, because everybody has a limit. And Job, you know, obviously uh, did not, he, he passed that. But it shows how uh, that no matter what comes, mm -hmm. it just doesn't matter what happens. It's not a reason or an mm -hmm. excuse to change course, to so. stop. To, it's just not. And uh, for entrepreneurs, that's one of the hardest lessons. Um, it's one of the hardest lessons for for them to learn because we're they they're so used to if it's easy and there's no conflict and there's no uh, obstacle and they think they're doing right and when there's obstacles they think they're not doing right or that they're or that they're on the wrong path instead of recognizing that anything great comes because of uh because of the problem you overcame in fact if you don't have big problems, you can't have great success. Uh, sure. Your no king is great because nothing, there is nothing that goes wrong. Your you, the greatness is determined by the size of the giant you slay. It's by what you overcome. It's what you do in spite of the circumstances that amazes people in the world today. It's not how hard do you have it. It's not the sob story. We can all say our sob story. We can all say how mm -hmm. bad things how we had it or where we came from or how hard we have to work. And it doesn't matter. You know, uh, we have to rule our own spirits, as Proverbs said. And in entrepreneurship, that's a bit harder because we almost are self-inflicting problems upon us. Well, if I didn't start this business, I wouldn't have that problem. If I wasn't trying to grow, I wouldn't have this problem. Maybe I should just go back and do. And of course, then you got to look at the Gospels when he said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. When, you, when God has called you to do something, to start the business, to grow the business, to move forward, to take that next step, we can't, having put our hands to the plow, look back. And, oh, we long for those days of what we know, the comfortable. Even Peter, after Jesus died, uh, it, when Jesus rose again, he, you know, he, he went back after the crucifixion to the, to the boats. He went back to his boat and thought, well, it's all over. Just going to go back to, you know, commercial fishing now. Going back to what I know. This was, you know, for nothing. And that's how a lot of entrepreneurs, it's the exact same thing. And But I think that's why kingdom entrepreneurship is so different than entrepreneurship, because we realize the spiritual nature of the challenges mm -hmm. we face. Everyone else thinks it's commercial and just a part of it. We recognize it as a tool that God is using to help us grow spiritually. And so uh, 
Yes, yes. I, I pray that uh, is a blessing to you and, and helps you on this journey. Mm -hmm. um, uh, definitely, uh, as you will be praying as you get your uh, get started this week. And um, mm -hmm. uh, one thing I want uh, you to be thinking of as you're doing this is not just the, 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 the manual labor part of it, but I want you to look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. I want to know how many you need to have. Uh, how, how much you're going to sell them for, what your net profit's going to be, how much your feed's going to be, how much it's going to be for someone to overlook those while you're not there because of the, because uh, it's in a different location. You, I want you to, I want you to see the math mm -hmm. behind I, yeah. so that we know that it's going to be profitable. Mm -hmm. The worst thing to do is build a business that's not profitable because okay. uh, we want you to Josh. make money, not to, spend, not to just cost you money. Excellent. Very good. Thank okay. you so much for sharing. Thank you so much. And Thank remember, you. remember you. be Thank taking you. pictures all, for the whole class. This applies to the whole class. Be taking pictures or videos on your mm -hmm. phone of the projects and of the different stages of growth. So mm -hmm. uh, like even support, take it before you paint it and take pictures after you paint it. These are things you're going to need to upload for as part of your grade for this class um, okay. to, so that we can see the progress. Uh, from where you started okay. and where you're ending up. Mm -hmm. So take photos and videos, uh, even if it's just showing, you know, oh, this is where we're going to start, this little patch of land right here, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then six months from oh. now, we look and see, now look at the the, the chicken house, the hen houses that we have here uh, or the number of chickens. We had, we started with this many, now look, here's all these. So that's kind of the traction we want to see. Okay, thank you. With pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Who Who else? We have time for one more. Maybe you have not gone in any of our sessions. Please kindly unmute and uh, share your business so that I can help guide. It's one thing to learn the lectures through the week. It's another thing to be able to specifically apply them. Okay, all right. So everyone must be doing great. Uh, here's what. Here's my last question. My closing question. Uh, <clears throat> what are some specific actions that you plan to take this week? Someone that has not gone yet, I would like for you to unmute and just tell us what you're going to be doing this week. What you're going to work on to move your business forward. Maybe Risper, Ranka, James Muendo, yes, yes. Booker, yes, sir. Yes, so uh, last week, from our last week uh, session, uh, you gave me some point of action to undertake so that uh, I could. Uh, be in a way uh, in line to achieving some goals within my car, uh, the, the, the sale of car, the business that I started for selling cars, the car car bazaar. Yes. So I went to real time, the way you had, uh, you had uh, suggested, I went to real time to check on what they do. So currently I've begin working on uh, a website and also, I've, I've also visited some guys who, who import cars. And uh, I've seen there is a progress uh, without having finances. There's, there's a progress in, in, start, in starting the business without having actually a capital to start or to buy a car with. So I've talked to guys and uh, I've seen guys are asking me the prices. How, how uh, the specs of the car, the specification of the cars they want to buy. So I see it's a, a, pro, a, a prospect of doing it the way you had uh, actually given me the go the 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 go forward on how to to build on my business. So going forward this week, I want to 
to work on the website and make it uh, functional mm -hmm. so that the business can actually take up a good course that it may be relevant. So yeah. I thank you for the insights you gave last week. I can see if I work on them and uh, revamp everything on them, I'll be somewhere. Amen. Yes. And you know, I, I rejoice because, you know, I think we saved you thousands of dollars last week. Uh, yes. It, it, um, you're starting the business in a much better way. And so yes. I rejoice that you are uh, to hear of the progress that you've made yes. this week. Uh, yes. That's a blessing to my soul. Um, I like the action you're taking that you've already, that I, I, I like that you spoke with the, the other importers. Uh, you're learning the business. You've already mm -hmm. taken action on the website. You're going to be finishing that up this week. That's great. Uh, and, and working on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that you're going to, as you learn more, you're going to keep getting the ideas of, of what the next step should be based on what you're learning. So at, once you have the website up, then it's going to be, okay, how do we get people there? What do we have on the website for people to buy or, you know, the partnerships and the relationships to sell other people's mm. cars, to make that money. And then you end mm. up, you know, buying your, your, you know, doing it yourself. Uh, that's what we all do, uh, Booker. Even right now, it's what I do in some areas. I, you just take it because there's always more. There's always more that you could do if I had more, but I just work with what I have to buy what I can. And, uh, mm. and then as I get more profit, then I'm able to buy more and, you know, it, that's just the process of it. That's just the process. Yes. So I, mm -hmm. I uh, applaud you um, for the work that you did this week. That is a great milestone that you move forward to get to the point that you are now. I am very yes. pleased. Uh, I, I trust me. I was I was not sure how that would go originally, but to hear the progress yes. you've made in a week, it is night and day. Uh, mm -hmm. Your thinking is right about this. I am no longer concerned that you're going to get hurt in business or, you know, financially uh, impacted negatively, but um, I feel I'm, I'm most confident that you are on the right track. Uh, and as you get that website and keep talking with the importers and let them know that you're going to help sell their cars for them. And uh, mm -hmm. you just need to get pictures and, you know, uh, other things, but you're going to be able to find anything anyone wants uh, because of the, your commitment uh, to doing so. Okay. Very good. Thank, okay, thank you. you. Thank you, Booker. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Anyone else? What are your action plans for this week? Okay. Very good. Thank you, class, for being here again this week. Please remember, we do not have class next Tuesday. I will be in Mexico. So uh, I will not be on uh, line, and, uh, but we will uh, join the following Tuesday. So I expect you to do double the amount of action items, okay? So do not take the pressure off of yourself. Remember, you're the only one that benefits from this. You're also the only one who gets hurt if you don't, all right? So do not cut yourself slack this week or next week. Do not cut yourself slack. Watch the lecture, share and interact on the chat, and um, uh, and then be writing the summaries and so forth. Uh, be ready and work. Excuse me, working on your business, uh, working at least ten hours in your business this week. All right. Uh, let's pray and thank the Lord for our time together, Father in heaven. <coughs> thank you. Thank you for your goodness your mercy, that you have enabled and empowered each of us with a mind that can seek your face for how we will please you with the work of our hands. It is not for us to bless. It is for you and you alone. It is for us to obey. It is for us to trust you. And we do so, Father. 
we do so, knowing that our hard work, our discipline, our work ethic, our dedication, our faithfulness to what you called us to do will be honored, will be prospered, and will be blessed. It will not be easy. There will be moments of doubt. There will be days of discouragement. But we seek you. We turn to you. And we ask that you would build up and strengthen these Roland College entrepreneurs, the special forces of entrepreneurs anywhere in the world. Father, that's why I will not take it easy on them. I will not let them off the hook because they represent the Lord Jesus Christ in business. Our prayer from the beginning was that Roland College would become the global epicenter of kingdom entrepreneurship, where we have hoverboards all over the place, uh, companies that go global, and that the most dominant products in the world and services are from kingdom entrepreneurs that you raise up through Roland College. That is not done through apathy. That is not done through laziness. It is done through much prayer. It is done through much work. And it is done through the wisdom from you. I pray your blessing on each one of our entrepreneurs, on e all of their businesses and on their families, that you would go before them in Jesus' name. Until we meet again, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Blessings to you. Amen. Amen.